हेलो 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 मेरे प्यारे बच्चों हाउ आर यू आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू डूइंग फैंटास्टिक आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन दिस अमेजिंग प्लेटफॉर्म ऑफ फिजिक्स वाला एंड वी आर हियर टुडे विद आर सुपर थर्टी वाला बैच एंड वी आर प्रिपेयरिंग properly with full dedication for our board exams right so our today's chapter is print culture and the modern world this is one chapter which i tell my kids tells you the reason of all the miseries of students if there was print there were books books came out for students students had to study students had to give exams and overall sare dukh ka karan is printing right so yes it's not all dukkha karan yeah i can understand it gives you a lot of pleasure as well so printing as a revolution as a technology uh when was it uh, you know invented how did it spread into the world how did it influence the people both in good and bad ways we are going to see in this chapter and we are also going to see the two versions how this impact was visible in europe and how it also came to india and how we were impacted by it so the chapter is basically divided into these two sections let us start a chapter print and the uh, print culture and the modern world so when was the first printed book introduced this concept of printing was firstly introduced in china china practiced wood block printing China is also the country where paper was invented so they created a wood block printing they would carve the alphabets on a uh, block of wood put some color on it and then stamp it just like a stamp they would take an imprint of that wood block on a piece of paper the piece of paper used uh, used to be very thin so they would uh, just take a print on one side and they would hang it for it uh, to dry up and finally all the papers are compiled to create a book so the wood block printing was firstly introduced in china and then it spread in the nearby areas of japan korea etc why china was printing books primarily china was conducting their civil services exam for the imperial uh, court for the royal court they needed good people to uh, as managers as soldiers as you know executives so they wanted to make sure that whoever is appointed here should be somebody who is educated and who passes through a exam so they used to conduct their civil services exam and for this books were printed people could buy those books people could study from those books and then eventually they could appear for the exam and be a part of the imperial services right so a uh, china japan and korea developed the earliest kind of print technology which was a system of hand printing books in china were printed with rubbing paper from 594 ad and both sides of the book were folded and stitched china for a long time was the major producer of printed material why because they were conducting their civil services examination for its bureaucratic position and its textbooks were printed in vast numbers print was now no longer confined to just the scholar officials yes once a technology gets out you don't just use it for one purposes we know that uh, printing was initially started to make sure that we are printing books which would be uh, focusing on the civil services examination basically for education purposes but slowly and gradually uh, people realize that you can write funny books you can write uh, story books you can write love stories and everything and eventually the type of text that was being circulated the type of books that was being circulated also expanded so merchants used print while collecting their trade information this new reading culture attracted new technology in the late 19th century slowly and gradually the western printing techniques and mechanical presses were imported this happened quite late but we here are trying to introduce to you that yes china was the first country where the uh, a form of printing a wood block printing was introduced and it was firstly spread in the neighboring areas of china and then it was taken over to europe okay 
print in japan what is the significant thing here there is one line which is most significant uh, hand printing technology was introduced by buddhist missionaries from china into japan around 768 to 770 ad the buddhist book diamond sutra is the oldest japanese book printed in 868 ad remember this it comes in a one mark question a lot of time it contained six sheets of text and woodcut illustrations printing of visual material led to interesting publishing practices we were not just printing words we were not just printing the theory we were also printing pictures so visual representation also came out in uh, a print form and we saw that many scenarios from day to day life were uh, reflected in the prints then came a person called marco polo from italy and he visited china and he saw the process of wood block printing how a piece of wood can be carved and its print can be taken on a piece of paper he learned this technique of wood block printing and he took it when he went back to europe he took this process he took this system with him to europe he taught the people of italy first where he came back and slowly and gradually this knowledge also started spreading in the parts of europe right uh, okay he brought the knowledge of wood block printing and soon the technology spread the to the other parts of europe gradually the demand for books started increasing why now we see a increase in the demand of books because now books were able in a able uh, available in a printed form before that books were just written by hand they were all manuscripts if books are written by hand then it is very difficult to make multiple copies of those books so people had to make sure that uh, whatever copy of a book that you have is uh, it becomes very precious so because uh, you won't find any other piece in the world and with manuscripts there were many issues also that if i have written a book which is brilliant suppose and you want to take this book i'll say you can just copy this book and you can have your own version of this book so while copying from my content you may make changes you make uh, make mistakes in copying the content so uh, replicating a manuscript used to be quite a difficult task but with print we were able to create multiple copies of a singular singular text and that helped in uh, increasing this reading population and people started demanding for more books so booksellers began exporting books to many different countries now books were printed on a larger scale and uh, people also started selling it outside their domestic territory then came another revolution brought in by mr joan gutenberg Mr. Johann Gutenberg was a German, and uh, he was the son of a merchant, right? And he himself was a very expert goldsmith. He knew how to polish and create small pieces of jewelry, trinkets, what we call them. So he was an expert in polishing the stones and creating small pieces of jewelry and with this knowledge he adapted existing technology to design his innovation his father had many olive gardens and olives are produced to uh, extract oil from right so to extract oil from olives you need an olive press an olive press looks something like this there is a big plate which fits into which fits into this plate here we can keep the olives they are pressed and oil is then extracted it collects underneath so he said why we can also use this same machine to create a print what we need to do is we have to create a frame and in this frame we can create small 
metallic alphabets so if i have to write how i can make a single h a single o a single w and i can write i can assemble all these alphabets in the sentence that i like that i want and i can create a whole page in this frame now i have to just fit this frame on the upper side of the uh, pressing machine and i have to put a piece of paper down there just uh, put color on it ink on it take a print remove the paper then you can replace it with another piece of paper there were many benefits to it one it was a mechanical machine so you don't have to use a lot of human effort the pressing would happen uh, through a mechanical system secondly the alphabets were all singular and could be changed with the wood block printing printing you were stuck to one piece of wood which is been carved with that page for a next page you have to carve another piece of wood here you just have to remove this setting of words and replace it with another setting of words so this new gutenberg press what we called it was uh, quite innovative quite you know new for the technology and this new design of innovation was the first or uh, was the first to create a printed book with the new system and the first book that was created was the bible around in 1430 he uh, created his book for by 1448 he you uh, know improvised the system and the first book that he printed was the bible because that was the most purest book that they have in the catholic culture but uh, he did not print entirely he was not like okay i finished printing this book this is the bundled up pieces of paper and here this is the final book he knew that most of the people liked their books to be unique so what he did was that he printed the basic theory but he also made sure to leave space to leave space for personal touches he made sure that if as a nobility member as a lord as a king if i am buying this bible i would not want a piece of paper which can be owned by anybody and everybody i would want something that is unique and is only and only in my library so what would i do i'll hire a painter i'll hire somebody to make this piece of paper unique for me so this person would come they would put designs flowers butterflies whatever i want on this piece of paper they could also uh, you know put in gold and silver alphabets to show off that i am such a rich person and that will make this book unique and a singular piece which is just in my library so uh, he printed around 180 copies of the bible and uh, he left spaces for the people to make changes according to their personal likings okay so printing was coming into a common arena and now common people were beginning to read so a new reading public was introduced still literacy was low literacy was low but people enjoyed listening to good books in gatherings literacy was still confined to only the rich people only the nobility only the first and second estate people the common people had very le less uh, education but still if there is like one people two people or three person in the village who can read and i happen to have brought a very interesting book and i brought harry potter right i bought harry potter and i tell my friends in the village that okay i bought harry potter and it's a very interesting story would you like to hear it so in the gatherings in the village like in pubs in uh, the evening gatherings people would listen to this these books which they liked it could be folk tales it could be ballads it could be historical stories anything that was appealing to the people was listened to by the people in a very careful way and that changed the types of books that were printed now 
in current situation modern situation we have books which are specially crafted for individual requirements ki okay i like fiction okay i like science uh, scientific books so you can buy an a specific type of book from a specific section of the bookstore but in that time because most of the people could not read themselves they just like to hear the stories so those books were encouraged those books were printed that people like to hear okay so the oral culture entered print and printing was highly influenced by the oral culture so this way the people who were listening to books started gaining their knowledge this spread of knowledge this spread of information was something that was very welcomed by the common people of course now you could uh, write your own book you could have it printed you could have it spread around the world and you could let people read about your views but there were many institutions which were scared of this kind of freedom of speech why especially we had the religious institutions the church was very afraid uh, with this print revolution why was it afraid church basically stands or any religious uh, institution basically stands on the authority of their religious texts that whatever is written in our book is the final word you cannot question it you cannot challenge it you cannot raise an eyebrow and say okay this is so this is wrong i don't agree with it you can't do this that's the authority of the religion but with the power of print what happened was that people now had the freedom to write whatever they wanted without actually coming out and showing their faces i could write a entire book an entire anti religious book without giving my name and that would definitely question the church in that time that would question the authority of the religion so that became a threat for the church that now books with modern thoughts books with anti religious thoughts were coming out and they may push people out of the religious sentiments and that may hurt the church here is an example of what i am trying to say martin luther wrote 95 theses this is important remember this in 1517 criticizing many of the practices and rituals of the roman catholic church his textbook printed copy led to a division within the church and to the beginning of the protestant reformation this one book which questioned the manner of uh, you no know, teachings the manner of the roman catholic church was questioning everything that has been going on for so, such a long time and people when read this 95 thesis they were very influenced and they were like okay, okay your version is also good and we we relate with your version more so this version this uh, part of christianity which questioned which protested eventually led to breaking of the roman catholic church into catholics and protestants the religion broke into two segments because of the influence of a book so you can imagine what kind of power they have but the church wasn't going to just sit quietly and uh, let people question it and uh, church definitely if we remember french revolution from class 9 church was above the king we had the uh, church kings and the common people first state second state third state the clergy was at the top so the church had a lot of power and they did not just sat there quietly they did not listen to anybody and everybody they also started making their moves they started identifying the defaulters they started picking them out punishing them and also created their own list of prohibited books to make sure that people don't read these books they said that these are these books are sinful they carry bad things and if you read these books which the list we have given to you then you are uh not a true catholic you are not faithful to the church here we have an example of a person uh minocchio 
he was a common man began to read books available in the loca in his locality he reinterpreted the message of the bible and formulated a view of god and creation that enraged the roman catholic church eventually he was called up and ultimately executed in 1558 the church began maintaining an index of the prohibited books that these are the books one should not read because they are prohibited you can see there is a small little cartoon beneath this part of uh, this section in ncrt which is like the there are skeletons roaming around that the store which carries books like this okay so reading was coming up people were uh, getting access to more and more books and this created a mania this created a revolution not a mania a revolution that oh we can read also we can get entertainment this was a version of entertainment and just like what we are feeling with internet these days they had a feeling in that time that entertainment at home i don't have to just sit and look at the gas stove whether the food is cooked or not i can also read i can read whatever i like so the booksellers they also adopted strategies how to make sure that more and more books reach to the people and more and more people are getting access to those books so booksellers employed peddlers who roamed around villages carrying books for sale there were almanacs their calendars ritual calendars along with ballads and folk tales small books like we have the penny chap books these were small story books folk tales ballads love stories historical events which could be bought for a penny then bibliothek bilu this was a book which was binded on a in a blue cover this uh, happened in france so small uh, handy books were now sold by chapmen small people on say bicycles or on by foot they used to carry them in a thela and they would just roam around selling those books allowing people to have access to those books not just the entertainment part but it also carried informative parts as well we had the periodicals then combining information and current affairs with entertainment now you knew what was happening in the kingdom now you uh, got the information that the king has done something wrong in that corner of the country earlier you had no access earlier it was all just words now you had the news you had the current affairs in a print form at your doorsteps in the form of uh, newspapers so result was people were getting information and information can be dangerous for people so yes people were getting information people were getting enlightened people were getting inspired by the thoughts earlier if i was just a common person i would not even uh, you know get to know what's happening in different parts of the country i would just sit in my village be happy in my small little town but now because i was getting information i was getting the knowledge that some people in bestile have raised their voice against the king i will connect with those people that yes the king is doing wrong and we need to be uh, a support to those people so people started gaining information the ideas of scientists and philosophers now became more accessible to the common people again remember the uh, philosophers in french revolution montesquieu they started showing people that only a monarchical form of government is not a, a singular form of government you can have a democracy you can have a constitution you can have your chosen representative take decisions for you so these uh, thoughts they influence the people a lot and there is an interesting line that is followed by these thoughts tremble therefore tyrants of the world 
tremble before the virtual writers so this statement says by mercier this statement is by the by mercier tremble therefore tyrants of the world tremble before the virtual writers that if you are a tyrant if you are a king or a ruler who is bad who is not doing good for the people you should be afraid why should you be afraid because virtual writers are here now virtual is invisible i can write anything against the king put it on a piece of paper have it printed in thousand copies and i just distribute it along the town and people will read about the views so this way i can influence the thoughts of the people i can encourage the people to rise up against the king so now the tyrants have to tremble they should fear these invisible writers who are going to influence the people's minds in many of mercier's novels the heroes are transformed by acts of reading so when you are reading a story and you see that okay the main protagonist the leader the hero of the story was in a poor situation then he got himself educated he read a book which changed his uh, thought process and then he rose up against the tyrant so this way people see their heroes changing or getting enlightened or getting uh, their strength through the reading so this was something that was also encouraged and definitely french revolution as we i am giving the example already french revolution has been the best example of how print how something uh, that has come out in the form of a book can transform the thoughts of the people what were the impacts of print uh, culture on the french revolution firstly print popularized the idea of enlightenment thinkers enlightenment thinkers are the thinkers who think in a different way enlightenment is batti jalna right there is a bulb uh, going ting and you're like oh that can also happen right so earlier the thought process was that clergy at the top king after him after the clergy and we are the common people we are the third state we are always going to be the third state the clergy and the king are always going to take away our money and we are always going to be poor and we never questioned this process but all of a sudden somebody came with an idea that why why can't you be the next king why can't you take decisions for yourself and we are like kidding yes baat to sahi bol raha okay so this way we realize that things can happen in multiple ways not just the way that we have been following through the conservative societies we had options and enlightenment happened enlightenment in terms of uh, administration enlightenment in terms of religion enlightenment in terms of your social setup everything was being questioned now everything was now put up to a new culture of dialogue and debate why not why are we following this why is the king not responsible for our poverty why is the king not giving the tax money back to us in the form of development why is the queen spending all the money on her hairstyles and shoes so we started uh, using our brain using our rationale to think now and once people start thinking once people start questioning that is something which is very very dangerous for the monarchs who have been just sitting there traditionally why because my father was the king okay so it encouraged a new culture of dialogues and debates and by the 1780s there was an outpouring of literature that mocked the royalty and criticized their morality mary and toinet was very fond of cakes and pastries she was known for her uh, overly expensive dresses and shoes and weird hairstyles so now cartoons caricatures started coming out showing off that how stupid this is how inefficient is the king 
and these cartoons and caricatures started mocking the royalty questioning their morality and asking people to ask questions do you want these people to be your leaders do you want these people to take decisions for you can you rely on them really so french revolution was highly influenced by the print culture and slowly and gradually we came up with new innovations of course it's a technology technology will improve with time so uh, the roller presses came in and new forms of printing came into existence books were printed for children women and workers for children let me write here uh, it was made sure that the books that were printed for children were morally correct not vulgar and were giving them a good value a good lesson so here is an example of the grim brothers of germany of germany they wandered across germany and they collected folk tales improvised them and started printing these uh, folk tales in uh, the form of children's books and they became quite famous so small children were uh, you know one of the target readers second were women penny magazines were printed for women uh, that would include cooking recipes embroideries uh, how to keep your house clean how to remove a stain from a shirt overall in a just we can say how to be an obedient wife and a good mother so basically the aim of life for women at that time was to just you know look for a good husband and get married and then be the most obedient wife the best mother to their kids but then uh, there were many women writers also who challenged these thoughts and uh, questioned that oh, you don't just have to wait for somebody to come and get married to you otherwise your life is useless no that's not the case but yeah penny magazines were one of the primary books that were printed for women for workers public libraries were opened up because they could not afford to buy the books uh, so workers in their spare time would go and read in the libraries and uh, many of the workers who got themselves educated who then had some chance to write down their own experiences they also started writing about the lives of the workers life, uh, lives of the laborers which was a part of a uh, society which was not visible to everybody uh, you know in initial years the books that were written they were written by the rich people from the rich people's perspective but now because the common people were also reading and seeing that uh, okay this is my life and i don't relate with the life which is shown to me on the screen or shown to me in this book now i'm going to tell the world what kind of a life i am leading so this way uh, the women the children the workers everybody was getting a chance to uh, be a part of this new print revolution be a lead a reader and you know be a part of this revolution okay so that was the part from europe now let's pack our bags and come back to our own country india so like everywhere else in the world we had uh, the concept of manuscripts religious text everything was written by hand on uh, the skin of trees on the bark of the tree or very delicate papers or on leaves so manuscripts were traditional manners of writing that we had in our country okay but then the portuguese were the first ones to came to india and they started printing in the country they basically started translating the local 
text and converted it into their language or vice versa just to uh, you know get to know about the area then eventually the british came they established their factories and slowly their colonies in the areas and the first one was Jogus, james augustus hickey who was the editor of a weekly magazine called bengal gazette this magazine used to uh, initially print about the uh, trade informations but slowly and gradually they realized that uh, just right printing the trade information uh, was kind of boring so he st also started printing the gossips the affairs the corruption that was going on in the east india company that raised eyebrows towards this magazine in india if we have to say which was the first indian newspaper ever printed was also called bengal gazette this was a magazine remember this this is a bengal gazette which was brought out by gangadhar bhattacharya who was close to rajaram mohan roy so uh, we are going to go through the same procedure that print comes to the country and it started spreading we were already an educated group but yes again education was not as uh, spread or as far reached as we would like it to be but again as printed content started coming out people especially the religious authorities started raising eyebrows questioning whether this is uh, within the guidelines within the limitations of the religion or not and not just one religion we have two religions hinduism how this was affected and how islam was affected in hinduism there were many practices like sati system like uh, idolatry like uh, widow immolation all these practices the evil practices all these practices were questioned by the people people like raja ram mohan roy he started printing his uh, opinions in magazines like uh, sambat komedi and all but the religious authorities were also not going to sit quietly they started then printing a counter text counter books against the opinions of these so called modern people who were questioning the authority of the religion so questions against hinduism were raised questions similarly against islam were also raised they feared that colonial rulers would eventually ask the people to convert to christianity and that will uh, be very dangerous for islam so in panic they started uh, issuing fatwas to make sure that the people are in line that the people are following the religion that the people are not questioning the authority of our religious text so fatwas fatwas are religious notices which are uh, brought out or declared by the ulemas the local uh, leader religious leader they if they see if they observe that something bad or something wrong is going on in the society they have the right to launch a fatwa which is kind of a notice to make sure that the people are not doing this anymore so uh, they started issuing fatwas and because now cheap lithographic uh, jo presses thi they were available so they now started putting making out fatwas on a large scale everything that could be questioned was questioned and fatwas over fatwas were 
declared by the ulemas this also kind of became a competition that one ulema from that mohalla is uh, has given out two fatwas and this has put a very good impact on the society so this ulema in this mohalla is going to now say oh that uh, malvi is uh, ji is going very famous why not i uh, declare some fatwas of my own but that for that you have to find out the flaws in the society you know so they started just pinpointing anything and, and everything and that kind of also became a rage kind of became a competition so religious authorities just like in europe were afraid that in the name of reforms or in the name of changes that these new text are proposing these new thoughts these new people are proposing is going to threaten the authority of the religion both islam and hinduism and as more and more people could now read they wanted to see their own lives experiences emotions and relationships reflected in what they read so novels became very popular uh reading materials short stories matters of political and social concerns came out and by the end of the 19th century a new visual culture was taking shape raja ravi varma was one of the most famous painters who brought the uh, indian historical events to life through the color of his uh, through the paintings of his uh and many caricatures and also cartoons also came out which were questioning how the british rule was ruling how we were just standing there uh, and not doing anything so questions were raised and eyebrows were raised and people were now taking making use of these reading uh, and printed material and not just the male section of the society the women were also influenced we get the names of many famous female writers here like in east bengal rash sundari devi who learned to read in the secrecy of her kitchen she wrote her autobiography amar jeevan which was the published in 1876 and was the first full length autobiography published in bengali language then we have kailash bhashini devi who wrote books highlighting the experiences of women about how women were imprisoned at home kept in ignorance forced to do hard domestic labor and treated unjustly by the very people they served then tarabai shinde from maharashtra pandita ramabai who uh, focused on the lives of upper caste hindu women especially the widows that in the name of religion how what kind of treatment they were given by the families and by the societies not just the women the underprivileged section those who were the invisible part of the society were also now getting a chance to write and print their views so issues of caste discrimination began to be written about in many printed texts jyotiba phule the maratha pioneer of low caste protest movement wrote about the injustice of caste system in his book gulamgiri b r ambedkar e v ramaswamy nayakar they were also pioneers in highlighting these kind of caste discriminations and uh, their writings were read by people all over india kashi baba a kanpur mill worker wrote chote aur bade ka sawal and sudarshan chakra wrote sachi kavitaye so people from every section of the society were getting a chance to uh, reflect on their lives and to put it in words get it printed and show the world that our lives what kind of miseries we are facing what kind of difficulties we have in our lives and if you are just going to read about the rich and powerful and the mighty who have everything served to them on a platter the real life is not like that real life includes struggles individual struggles which vary from person to person and finally print and censorship censorship means 
when you try to control what is uh, given out to the people through media this time media is through print media now censorship is also included in how you show it on the television what you are showing on the internet whatever is given out to the people in visual or uh, print media so after the revolt of 1857 the attitude to freedom of the press changed initially there was freedom of press people had the right to write against anything in fact even the british magazines even the british newspapers a lot of time they used to question the wo working manner of the east india company but once the revolt of 1857 happened the print media realized their strength that yes we can ask the people to join a revolt we can make them think on the line that we are thinking so people what they started doing was they started printing their content in vernacular languages vernacular is the local language if anything is printed in english then definitely it can be very easily caught by the east india company if i am printing something in bengali if i am something in uh, printing something in maithili in hindi or in rajasthani language then you will not be easily it will not be easily caught and i can spread my views to my people right so as vernacular newspapers became assertively nationalist the colonial government began debating measures of stringent control and eventually in 1878 the vernacular press act was passed the vernacular press act said that if you are writing anything in your vernacular language you have to get it checked approved by the east india company and if we found anything anti government in it we are going to just cut it and then put you in jail okay so when punjab revolutionaries were deported in 1907 bal gangadhar tilak wrote with great sympathy about them in his newspaper kesri and newspapers the local vernacular print media became a very strong weapon to uh, encourage people in a nationalistic ideology to show them that yes we are one unit the british are our common enemy and we need to fight against them so pen is definitely mightier than the sword right so this is the gist of the chapter quite a long chapter okay let's start with our multiple choice questions with regard to the relationship between print culture and french revolution which of the following statements are true print culture caused the ideas of enlightenment reason and rationality to reach a large number of people which weakened the authority of the church and the power of the state true by its 70 80s there was an outpouring of literature that mocked the royalty and criticized their morality true print created a new culture of dialogue and debate and made people reevaluate their long held views beliefs and assumptions true print culture spread in a way that it did not at all become the means of all the expression for the expression of monarchical and church propaganda no 1 2 3 are true so this is our answer which of the following statements regarding printing in medieval europe are correct woodblock printing reached europe in the 13th century the aristocrats and monks criticized printed books as cheap vulgarities in the beginning yes printing did not entirely displace the art of producing books by hand correct martin luther had reservations against printing of books no he said they are a gift of god so 1 2 and 3 are correct statement 1 says hand printing developed in china statement 2 says the chinese state printed textbooks in vast numbers both the statements are correct and but it does not provide an explanation it does not provide an explanation so both the statements are correct but it does not provide an explanation who said printing is the ultimate gift of god and the greatest one it was mr martin luther who said that if you know printing had not come no revolution would have appeared so printing is the ultimate gift of god and the greatest 
one which of the following was the first indian newspaper remember this this is an important one it is bengal gazette consider the following events related to print culture and identify the correct chronological response from the options given thereafter buddhist missionaries from china introduced hand printing technology into japan gutenberg perfected the system of olive press marco polo brought wood block printing technology to italy the earliest kind of print technology developed in china so this happened first then second then third and then fourth d a c b d a c b okay very short answer question what is calligraphy the art of beautiful handwriting is known as calligraphy i am sure you have done this in your junior classes and the teachers keep on telling you write in a clean way have good handwriting that's calligraphy okay who was the major producer of printed material in china for what purpose what this material used the imperial state of china was the major producer of printed material the textbooks were used by the students who wanted to appear for the civil services exam which is the oldest book to be printed in japan diamond sutra oldest book printed in japan is the diamond sutra which contained six sheets of text with wood woodcut illustrations who was marco polo he was an explorer traveler from italy and uh, he returned to italy in 1295 after many years of exploration in china and he brought the knowledge of woodblock printing to europe who developed the first printing press mr gutenberg why were manuscripts not widely used in everyday life manuscripts were very fragile and uh, expensive because there were very few copies of it they had to be handled carefully and they could not be read easily because they were written by hand every handwriting is not legible okay so manuscripts were not widely used in everyday life what was the basic objective of 95 thesis the basic objective of 95 thesis was to criticize many of the practice and rituals of the roman catholic church what was the role of cartoons and caricatures in french revolution the cartoons and caricatures that came out uh, during the french revolution they criticized the morality of the monarchs and how they were dealing with the common people so cartoons and caricatures highlighted the ordinary people peasants artisans workers uh, which had to had a hard time while the nobility enjoyed life oppressed them circulation of Uh, oppress them circulation of cartoons led to the growth of hostile sentiments against the monarchs name any four indian women writers of the 19th century rash sundari devi kailash bhashini devi tara bai shinde pandita rama bai what was vernacular press act vernacular press act was passed by the colonial government in 1878 to ensure that the content which is printed in vernacular languages is controlled monitored and approved by the east india company and then only it is uh, let out for the people explain the main features of the first printed bible about 180 copies were printed and it took 3 years to produce them the text was printed in new gutenberg press with metal type but the borders were carefully designed painted and illuminated by hand by artist every page of each copy was different as i said that space was left for different type of drawings paintings designing that individual wanted in their respective copies different colors were used within the letters in various places there was a virtual reading mania in european countries in the 18th century 
explain the factors responsible for this virtual reading mania low cost of production printing reduce the cost of books now uh, as we said already that manuscripts used to be very expensive now we could buy books at a very cheap rate and uh, the time uh, and labor required to produce each book came down and multiple copies could be produced with greater ease accessibility of book also became easier common people lived in a world of oral culture they heard sacred texts read out ballads recited folk tales narrated knowledge was transferred orally people collectively heard a story or saw performances increase in literacy rate so uh, churches of different denominations set up schools in villages carrying literacy to peasants and artisans by the end of the 18th century in some parts of europe the literacy rates were as high as 60 to 80 percent tremble therefore tyrants of the world tremble before the virtual writers who said this louis sebastian mercier said this and uh, by this statement he meant that the printing press as a is a most powerful engine of progress and public opinion is the force that will sweep despotism away and uh, in most of his novels the hero as we already just saw in the chapter that the heroes were transformed enlightened by the by reading the books convinced of the power of print in bringing enlightenment and destroying the basis of despotism mercier finally proclaim tremble therefore tyrants of the world tremble before the virtual writers the bengal gazette was a commercial paper open to all but influenced by none this is kind of the true spirit of uh, media we can say that when uh, mr hickey james augustus hickey was writing this magazine which was basically to you know give out information of the trading activities of east india company and later on he started adding on the gossips and the corruption happening on the east india company so the east india company authorities did question him they said why are you printing the gossips why are you printing the corruption issues in your magazine this is putting a bad face to the east india company this is putting a bad impression of us so on this statement mr hickey said that we are a commercial paper open to all everybody is free to come buy and read this paper but controlled by none nobody can come and tell us you print this and don't print that so this is how media should uh, media operated so hickey published a lot of advertisements including those that related to imports and sale of slaves but he also published a lot of gossip about the company senior officials enraged by this the governor general warren hastings persecuted hickey and encouraged the publication of officially sanctioned newspapers that uh, could be that could counter the flow of information that damaged the image of the colonial government oral culture and print culture were complementary to each other justify the statement with any three suitable arguments so we read that whatever was printed was circulated on a mass scale by the oral culture one or two people in the village would read out the stories the folk tales the ballads uh, to a gathering and everybody will get a chance to be entertained by that so earlier reading was only restricted to the elites common people lived in the world of oral culture only the information that came to them through mouth would reach them now books were available so information was also reaching them with the printing press books could reach out to wider sections of the society if earlier there was a hearing public now a reading public came into being publishers had to keep in mind the wider reach of the printed books even those who did not read could enjoy listening to the books being read out so printers publishing popular ballads and folk tales and such books would be profusely illustrated with pictures so if i am in front of 10 people who cannot read i am reading the book out to them i will show them i'll read the content and then i'll show them a very nice bright picture they'll be like oh that's very 
interesting right so these were then sung and recited at gatherings in villages and in taverns and in towns not everyone welcomed the printed books and those who did also had fears about it especially the church and the uh, authorities so fear of negative thoughts many were of the opinion that printed words and the wider circulation of books would have a negative impact on people's mind they will go rebellious and irreligious especially destruction of valuable literature people will now not have faith in the religious text which is considered valuable and the only valuable literature people will read sinful books people will read thoughts which are irreligious which are not approved by the church which are not according to the morality of our religion so this may uh, no make the minds of the people defective people might start criticizing the church like martin luther did and compilation of ancient and medieval scientific texts the ideas of scientists and philosophers now became more accessible to the common people so people were now thinking on the scientific lines logical lines so that also influenced them as a result the people who wanted the society to remain in a conservative traditional way were afraid okay so now we have a case based question there is a paragraph let me read it out for you the influence of print media namely newspapers and magazine is significantly limited in developing countries due to the prevalence of illiteracy despite this print media plays a crucial role in shaping public opinion and determining what is deemed newsworthy margaret gallagher research in early 1980s revealed that women and women's issues were given minimal coverage in newspapers with gender stereotypes being reinforced in general however like uh, you know when we read about uh, tara bai shinde pandita rama bai and all in india also there were counter publish published materials istri dharm vichar uh, by ram chadha and you know there was in calcutta batala house a whole section of books which was uh, criticizing those women who were uh, giving out any kind of a modern thought and uh, they started printing their text on how to be an obedient wife or what are the things that you should not do as a woman so they also started printing counter material to suppress the free modern independent thoughts of women okay so however with the rise of feminist criticism of print media and the involvement of feminist professionals in the industry there has been some progress in the past women and their issues were rarely featured on the front page of newspapers and were often portrayed as victims of violence today women are more visible in mainstream print media although they still coexist with outdated sexist images and back page pinups questions what do you mean by the term penny magazine also add name of prominent women writers in history of print media penny magazine were especially meant for women as were manuals teaching proper behavior and housekeeping it was kind of a guide book to teach the young girls how to be good obedient wives okay some of the best known novelists were jane austen the leads in jane austen's novels were always women women with brains women who would question in fact challenge the set social uh, setups the bronte sister george eliot write about rash sundari devi she was a young girl who was married in a very orthodox household she learned to read in the secrecy of her kitchen later she wrote her autobiography amar jeevan which was published in 1876 it was the first full length autobiography in bengali language what was the role of press in liberating the rights of women in india the press played a significant role in advocating the women's rights in india during the late 19th century and early 20th century various newspapers and journals including stree dharm vichar stree dharm by pandita rama bai and bharti by kandukuri uh, virisalingam highlighted issues such as women's education widow remarriage and their overall empowerment these 
publications helped raise awareness and contributed to the evolving discourse on women's rights in india the press continued to be an essential platform for addressing and advancing women's rights throughout the 20th century and beyond till date we have a very powerful weapon in the form of media which would uh, in you know which would highlight and print and tell the world the kind of unfair or unjust things happening in the society against women right so that brings us to the end of our today's long lecture anyway the lecture was quite the chapter was quite interesting i hope you enjoyed the lecture and i want you to put up doubts if you have any i'll make sure i'll clear all your doubts so stay super and strive to be the best i'll see you in the next class bye bye bachcho have a great day